All right. Today we're going to talk more about exponential growth and decay. There we go. All right. Remember your exponential growth and decay models. It says the mathematical model for exponential growth or decay is given by the, this formula. And you can either use f of t for function notation or just capital A. What capital A represents is the amount after something has either grown or decayed. We're going to be talking about um, decay at first, okay? So one, one um, example of where exponential functions are used is to determine the age of fossils and artifacts, okay? Archaeologists do this all the time. The method is based on considering the percentage of carbon-14 remaining in the fossil or artifact. Carbon-14 decays exponentially with a half-life of approximately 5,715 years. The half-life of a substance is the time required for half of a given sample to disintegrate. Thus, after 5,715 years, a given amount of carbon-14 will have decayed to half the original amount. Carbon dating is useful for artifacts or fossils up to 80,000 years old. Older objects do not have enough carbon-14 left to determine age accurately. So this stuff is pretty important, okay? There's a lot of crazy stuff in this world. And things that are unstable like plutonium, um, nuclear weapons, uh, radioactive what, what, radioactive, what is that called? Radiation, um, you know, from the bomb or whatever. Um, scientists have to figure out, you know, how long that stuff is going to stay around and when is it safe to go back. I think the best example is the Chernobyl diaries um, where they bombed the, I don't even know where, where it was, Germany somewhere? I don't remember. Somewhere they bombed it and like to this day it's uninhabitable you still can't go there because there's still so much radiation there because radiation takes a long time to go away anyway that's kind of what we're going to be talking about so what you need to know about the formula is that big A is the amount left after decay or it would be, if it's growth, then it would be the amount that's there after it got finished growing or after whatever, how much ever it grew in a certain amount of time. A sub naught is always the initial amount that was there. Your K is your rate at which this thing decays by. And then T, of course, is time. If K is greater than zero, then it will be exponential growth. If K is less than zero, then your um, function will be a decay, okay? All right, so here we go. It says, use the fact that after 5,715 years, a given amount of carbon-14 will have decayed to half the original amount to find the exponential decay model for carbon-14. Okay, so it says that all they gave me was time. They gave me time was 5,715. Well, guys, let's see. If I plug that in, I have k to the five or k times five thousand seven hundred and fifteen. Um, I've got to figure out k. What what they're asking me to figure out is to to find the decay model. Which means, in order to find the decay model, I have to figure out the rate at which this stuff is decaying at. Okay. So the problem is I only need, I have to have one I don't know. And right now I have three I don't knows. Follow? Let me highlight that. I don't know the amount left. I don't know the initial amount. And I don't know the decay rate. And the whole rate, the only way I can find a model is if I can figure out that decay rate. Well, you're going, well, they can't mess me up like that. They didn't give me enough information. Oh, but they did. You just don't realize it. Okay. What they gave you was they're talking about half-life. So you could pick any initial amount you want. Oops. You could pick any initial amount you want. All right. And then just cut it in half to be, to figure out half-life. Do you see what I'm saying? So if I started off with 100, I don't care, grams, whatever, 
then in half-life, after 5,715 years, only half of that will be left. Follow? Or you could pick 10 and then say there'd only be 5 left. Or you could pick 1 and say there's only going to be 0.5 left when you're done. My, my suggestion to you is to use 1 and 1 half because th those are small numbers. And besides, it, it wouldn't matter. Even if you used... Five, seven, five. Look, even if I used 50 and 100, the first thing you're going to do is isolate the E. So you would divide by 100 on both sides, and 50 divided by 100 is 0.5. So start with whatever you want, but after that first step, you're going to end up with 1 on this side and 0.5 on this side because you're talking about half-life. So whatever you put here, once you simplify it, if you called this 10 and this 5, when you divide, what are you going to end up with? 0.5. Uh, you could call if you started with 2 grams and went to 1 gram, right? Yeah, when you divide it by 2, you're going to end up with 1 on this side and 0.5 on this side. So my suggestion is to you just... Pick one and a half. If you if you have one after five thousand one of something after five thousand seven hundred fifteen years, there's only going to be half of whatever you started with. Half of that carbon fourteen is going to be left. So I've got to figure out K now. Now I can once I picked my initial and my final amount. So to find K, I'm going to have to drop it. To drop it, I'm going to have to throw an LN at it. So I'm going to LN both sides. And if I take the natural log of 0.5, I get negative 0.693147180 oh, equals 5,715K. Because um, when you do ln base E of E, they cancel out and that drops down. So to get K now, I'm going to divide by 5,715. And my decay rate is going to be divided by 5715, negative 1.21. Actually, let me write this all out. My calculator says negative 1.2128596E, negative 4. What that means, guys, is your, your decay rate should be a decimal, and it should be less than 1. And it is. That's what that e to the negative 4 means. It means they were too lazy to write all the zeros in front, but what that means is this decimal is actually four places this way. One, two, three, four. So my decay rate is negative 0.00012. Okay? So my function then is going to be 0.5 equals 1e. E. Well, actually... We're not plugging in the amounts now. Your, so my function for carbon-14 would be the final amount will be whatever the initial amount is times e to the negative 0.00012t. There's my model for carbon-14 decay. Okay? So for B, they want us to use that. So let me write that before I forget it. A was A sub naught E to the negative 0.0012 T. Let me check. Uh, negative point, oops, I forgot a zero. Negative 0.00012 T. So I found the model that represents carbon-14 decay. So for B, it says, in 1947, earthenware jars containing what are known as the Dead Sea Scrolls were found by an Arab Badun, Bad, yeah, herdsman. Analysis indicated that the scroll wrappings contained 76% of their original carbon-14. Estimate the age of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Um, when they're saying the age of the Dead Sea Scrolls, the age of the Dead Sea Scrolls, they're talking about how old is it. In other words, how much time has gone by. Well, if only 76% of their original carbon-14 was left, 
So originally there must have been a hundred percent, right? Um, e to the negative point zero 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 one two t, but what was left was only seventy six percent of it. Okay, so again now to solve this we are going to uh, we got to isolate this on the divide by a hundred which gives me 0.76 equals e to the negative 0.00012 t. I need to get t out of the air, so I'm going to ln both sides. If I take the natural log of 0.76, I get negative 0.2744368. And you can round, guys. I just don't until the very end, just because it rounding makes your answer less and less accurate every time you do it. Ln base E of E cancels out, and negative 0.00012t drops. So to figure out T, I'm going to divide by negative 0.00012. Negative 0.00012 cancels. And the age of the Dead Sea Scrolls is divided by negative 0.12312. 2,286.97 years old. If we run to the nearest year, the Dead Sea Scrolls are 2,287 years old. Cool? Alright, so we're going to do it again. This one we're not going to talk about carbon-14. This one we're talking about strontium-90. And it's a waste product from nuclear reactors. As a consequence of fallout from atmospheric nuclear tests, we actually all have a measurable amount of strontium-90 in our bones. So it says for A, the half-life of strontium-90 is 28 years, meaning that after 28 years a given amount of the substance will have decayed to half the original amount. Find the exponential decay model for strontium-90. So again we're talking half-life, which means at the end only half of whatever I started with is going to be left. E to the K times 28. I've got to, in order to, in order to answer any questions, I've got to get the decay rate of this strong, strontium 90, okay? So i got to solve it for K, which means I'm going to throw an LN at it, all right? And if I take the natural log of 0.5, I get negative 0.693, a whole bunch of more numbers. I'm not going to write them all out, but I leave them on, yeah, I will, I'll write them all out. Okay, I wouldn't if I wasn't doing this for you guys. I would write out just a few, but when I went to do any calculations with it, I would use all of the numbers. In other words, just leave it on your screen and keep working from the last line. Anyway, LNE base E cancels out, and I would have 28K drop. So to get my constant of decay, I would divide by 28, and I get K equals negative 0 0.02475525564. So my equation will be the final amount will be the initial amount times e to the negative 0 0.025t. I just rounded the 7, bumped it up. Okay, so there's my function for strontium-90. Now that I have the equation that models it, um, I can use it to answer questions about other things that have strontium 90 in it or whatever. So we got to remember our formula which was A equals A sub naught E to the negative 0 0.025 T. So it says suppose that a nuclear accident occurs and releases 60 grams of strontium 90 into the atmosphere. How long will it take for strontium 90 to decay to a level of 10 grams? So they're telling me I've started with 60 grams, so that would be my a sub naught. And they want to know how long, so they're asking me to find t when there's only 10 grams left. So that one would be your capital A. So I change a to 10, a sub naught to 60, e to the negative 0 0.025t. I have to isolate before I can drop it like it's hot, so I'm going to divide by 60. 10 divided by 60 is 0.16 repeating equals e to the negative 0.025t. Now I can throw my natural log at both sides to drop it like it's hot. ln 
of that answer is negative 1.79175469 equals, those cancel, negative 0.025t. And to figure out how much time it's going to take, I divide by negative 0.025. Cancels out, and t equals negative 0.025. 71.67 years. Okay, so if 60 grams of strontium-90 was released into the atmosphere, it would take 71 years for it to decay down to 10 grams. Okay? All right, you try this one. Hit pause. Come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got 73. It says a sample of 500 grams of lead 210 decays to pol polonium 210 according to this function. So I don't even have to write my own. They're giving me A of T, or just capital A, the final amount is the original amount, 500. E, they already found the decay rate for me, so I don't have to do that. They've already done it for me. They did whatever they had to do to figure out that this lead goes to polonium in at a rate of negative 0.032 whatever times time. All right, so to figure out the, well, to answer the question, there's my formula. It says, what is the amount of the sample after 60 years? 60 years is time. So they're telling me to replace T with 60. And that I can just type in the calculator. So I do 500 E, so second divide, caret, parentheses, or it will be wrong, negative 0.032 times 60, close your parentheses, and I get 73.303481107. To the nearest gram, the 3 wouldn't multi uh, bump it up. So it would just be 73. Okay. Hit try this one, hit pause, come back when you're ready. And hope we got 180. Again, Merry Christmas, Happy Birthday to me. They give me the formula, so they've already calculated the decay rate. And this model models the amount in pounds of a particular radioactive material stored in a concrete vault, where X is the number of years since the material was put in the vault, so X is time. If 500 pounds of the material are placed in the vault, that means that's my initial amount, how much time will need to pass for only 84 pounds to remain? So they want the final amount to be 84. Negative 0.0099x. So I'm trying to figure out the time. So I've got to isolate before I can throw in natural log at it. So I'm going to divide by 500. And I get 0.168 equals negative 0.0099x yeah e to the I'm sorry e to the negative 0.0099x all right so to drop it like it's hot I'm gonna throw a natural log at both sides and if I take the natural log of 0.168 I get negative 1.7837913 equals ln base e of e cancels negative 0.0099x. To get x alone, I'm going to divide by negative 0.0099. And I get, divided by negative 0.0099, 180.1809, yada, 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 to the nearest would be 180 years. All right, try this one. Hit pause. Come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got 37.306. All right, it says the half-life of silicone 32 is 710 years. If 50 grams is present now, how much will be present in 300 years? So there's my formula. All right, and they are giving me 50 grams are present now. And we've got... 
Hold on here. Hold on. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Now we got to do a couple things. They didn't give me my decay rate, did they? So we're talking about half-life. So half of whatever you start with will be left in AE to the K 710 years. Again, we've got, they either have to give us K or we have to figure out the decay rate. So before you can plug in your beginning and your ending amount, you've got to figure out the decay rate for the half-life. So you always start with 0.5 on this side and 1 on this side. All right, so I'm going to, to solve for K, I'm going to LN both sides. LN of 0.5 is negative 0 0.693147186 equals, those cancel, and I get 710K. So divide by 710, and my decay rate is negative 9.7626363 e negative 4 so I gotta move four places left 1 2 3 4 so my decay rate is negative 0 0.00098 if I round to two places okay so my function now is a equals a sub naught e to the negative 0 0.00098 t for time. Okay, so now I've figured out my decay rate. Now I can figure out how much will be present in 300 years. So they're saying if I start with 50 grams, how much will be left? So they want the final amount after 300 years. So they're telling me to change time to 300 and solve. So if I type this in, I get 50e caret parentheses negative 0 0.0098 times 300, close your parentheses, and I get not the right answer. Unless this is wrong. I got this. Mm -hmm. I got 2.6432, which doesn't make any sense because if half-life is 710 years and I'm only letting it decay for 300 years, there would be more than half of that left, and that, that's not even close to half of it left. So let's figure out what I did wrong. Let me start over here. Sometimes the easiest thing to do is just start over. Okay, the half-life is 710 years. So half of my original amount will be left after 710 years. So I have 0.5 equals e to the 710k, right? Alright, so I'm going to natural log both sides. ln of 0.5. I do get negative 0.693 equals because I ln both sides equals 710k divide by 710 and k equals one two, yeah that's negative point zero 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 nine seven six maybe I should round well oh, that couldn't be that far off so it looks like I have the right K. So let's see. How much will be left if I started with 50 to the negative 0 0.000976 times 300? I don't know how I typed that wrong. Oh, yeah, I do. I didn't put enough zeros in. Eww. All right, let me try typing it one more time. 50e caret 
parentheses, 0 0.000976 times 300. What the heck? Now I got 67. I forgot the negative. Darn it. E -la. 50 E. Carrot. Parentheses. Negative. Point zero 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 nine seven six times three zero zero parentheses. Enter. There we go. You type that in correctly, like I didn't do three times in a row, I get thirty seven point three zero eight five six eight. And mine's a little bit off because of rounding. Okay. Whew. Be careful when you type, clearly. All right, you try this one. Hit pause, come back when you're ready, and you should get 15,299, unless you're like me and can't type. All right, it says a fossilized leaf contains 15% of its normal amount of carbon-14. How old is the fossil to the nearest degree? Use 5,600 years as the half-life of carbon-14. So we are going to have to figure out the decay rate first, again, as usual. So half of the original amount will be left after uh, K times 5,600 years. So to figure out my decay rate, I'm going to ln both sides. ln of 0.5, I guess I should just memorize this by now, point, negative 0.693147, let's just call it 0.693 equals these cancel and I get 5600k. So to get k alone I'm going to divide by 5600 and I get k equals negative 1.2377 but four places left would be negative 0 0.000124 let's call it. The more you go out the more accurate your places your answer is going to be. So that's my k. So my function is going to be a equals a sub naught e to the negative 0.000124t. Now I can answer the question because now I know the decay rate. So it says a fossilized leaf contains 15% of its normal amount. So it has 15% left of 100% e to the negative 0.000124t. So to solve this for t, Yes, yeah, solve this for t, I'm going to divide by 100. I get 0.15 equals e to the negative 0.000124t. I need to drop it like it's hot, so I'm going to throw a natural log at both sides. If I take the natural log of 0.15, I get negative 1.897, blah, 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 equals, cancels, and that's negative 0.000124t. And to get t alone, I'm going to divide by negative 0.00124. Cancels out, and t equals, divided by negative 0.00124. Let's see if I can divide carefully now. And I get 15299.35. So that would be 15,299 years old. All right. So what other formulas have you worked with that looks really similar to exponential growth and decay? Well, remember A sub naught? I mean, you remember A pert and A per naught? I think that's what they're getting to. All right. So we are at homework now. So happy homeworking and I will see you next time.